all hands together.
Greetings, I'm Prophetess Charlene D. Holtz. And I'm Bishop Randall E. Holtz. And we want to welcome you to the New Hope MBC Ministries of Miami, where we believe in building strong families for the 21st century and beyond. We welcome you to our live broadcast as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. We invite you to join us in the praise and worship experience. Please invite a friend or two to come along as well. Now, let's go right into the service. Good morning, good morning. Today is the last Sunday of May, and uh, today we give praise this morning on this great Sunday, giving God thanks, uh, giving Him praise, giving Him honor, giving Him glory. We just thank God for allowing us, the New Hope family, to see another Sunday this year. And uh, as we get ready to come back together soon, I pray blessings over your household. And I just want you to enjoy today's service because we're still here. So if you will, bow your heads in your, in your, in your cars, in your home, and let's go to the throne of grace. Lord God, right now, we, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you this morning for allowing us to see another day, for now allowing us to wake up. We give you all the praise. We pray for strength. We pray for, for, for new love. We pray for a new understanding. And make us to be more like you. Make us to walk like you and talk like you. And we are going to continue to give you praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the New Hope Praise team. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, he's good this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, has God been good to you? Come on, just alone today, God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. God, we give your name praise. We give your name glory. Come on, let's bless his name. Come on. Come on, he's good, he's good, he's good. Come on, he's good, he's good, he's good. Tap those hands, come on. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Come on, say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Hey, Lord, you're good. Yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Oh, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever.
come to praise him this morning. Come on, we come to give God praise. We shabakin all over the place this morning. Come on. God is an awesome God. He's mighty. He's been real good to us. Come on. God has been real good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We come before you today, God, just lifting up your name. God, giving you praise all over this building today, God. In our homes, Lord God. In our cars, in our jobs, wherever we may be, wherever we may be listening to this service, God, we giving your name praise right now. Hallelujah. God, as we giving our stuff away to you, God, we're praising you and giving it all to you, God. Come on, come on. We give our stuff away this morning. Come on, come on, come on. We give our stuff away to God this morning to use us, God. Use us in a mighty way, God. Use us in a mighty way, God. Hallelujah. Come on. Wherever you are, worship him. Come on. Wherever you are, wake him up in the house. Tell him it's worship time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. We give ourselves away this morning. Oh, God, we give ourselves away. Oh, God, we give ourselves away today. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Everybody say, I give myself away. Come on, let's give it to God. I give myself away so you can use oh, me. Oh, God. Yes. I give myself away. Come on, the simple words. Come on, I give myself to you, God. I give myself away so you can use Here I am. Here I am. Here I stand. Here I am. Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I'm longing. Lord, I'm longing to see your desires, God. Your desires revealed in me. I give myself away. I give myself away. Come on, wherever you are, worship Him. Come on, lift up holy hands and surrender to God this morning. So you can so use me. Come on. Can you? Oh God. I give myself away. Come on, he's worthy of all the praise and all the glory. Come on, you might as well just give him praise give this morning. Give myself away. So you can you Come on, take my heart. Take my heart. Take my life. living as a living sacrifice all my dreams all my dreams all of my plans God all my plans Lord I place them Lord I right there in your hands God come on I give myself I give myself away
My life is now my own. Yes, God. Yes, God. To you I belong. Yes. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life is now my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on, everybody, say, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you, God. To you, I belong. Oh, oh, oh. I give myself. Give myself. I give myself. Give myself, give myself to, to you. My life is not my own, y'all. My life is not my own. To you, God, it belongs. To you, I belong. Use me as you please, God. I give myself. Use me as you please, God. Come on, my life, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you, God. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. My life, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. Come on, take the time and tell God to use you. To you I belong. Come on, come on, let him use you this morning. Whatever it is, let God have his way. Come on, get out the way. Move stuff out the way so God can do what he has to do in our lives. Use us as you please, God. To you I belong. Oh, oh. I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on, wherever you are, I dare you to worship God right now. Come on, if you're giving yourself away to God this morning, you should be free. Come on, you should be free. Free to worship, free to praise. Come on, free to give him all the glory he deserves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Come on, come on, don't stop right there. Continue to submit yourself to God. Lord, we give ourselves away. We give ourselves away to you. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be honored. You continue to do all of the great things that we don't deserve, but, but we just give ourselves away. So if you don't mind right now, just lift your hands and continue to say, I give myself to you. I give myself away. Oh, God. I give myself away for you to use me. I give myself away. Oh, God. I give myself away so you can use me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Right now, we're getting ready to hear a word from our bishop. We pray that God will continue to strengthen him, continue to touch him, uplift him, uh, keep him around. Yes, sir. And I thank God that's, that's my father. That's my role model. He taught me so much, and I love listening to him talk about the word of God. I love the way he teaches it. I love the way he preaches it. And uh, I know God is going to bring him a word to give to us today. So as our praise team come right now and give our song our preparation a praise before our word. Uh, the none or the voice you will hear is the Bishop Randall E. Holtz, senior here at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church.
we pray eternal God our father we thank you once again we praise you and God we give your name glory and we give your name honor for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it God we come today with thanksgiving upon our lips praise is deep within our hearts we come to lift up and to magnify the name of Jesus. You said in your word that if I be lifted, that you would draw all men unto you. So God, we lift you in our prayer. We lift you in our worship. And we lift you in our praise. Somebody right now, God, need to be drawn closer to you. Somebody is lost. Somebody child is out there hanging over hell's door. But God, through our prayers and our praise, we ask now that you will send the Holy Ghost. Rescue that boy. Rescue that girl. Rescue that man. Rescue that woman. Rescue that family. And bring them back home to you. God, we need to be saved. We need to be safe in your arms. We're living in troubled times. Danger is all around us. But you promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So God, we run to the mountain. We are hiding under the shadow of your wings. Keep us and bless us. Protect us. Provide for us. God, make a way for us. Your people are crying out. I yield, I yield, can't hold out no longer. So God, in this hour, God, in this very moment, you get the glory. You get the honor. And you get the praise. God, move by your spirit. Touch, heal, and deliver in the name of Jesus. Can't nobody do us like you. Can't nobody love us like you. Can't nobody save us like you. God, we need you. Come on in, God. We invite you in. Have your perfect way. You get the glory. You get the honor. You get the praise. We lift you in our songs. We lift you in our prayer. We lift you in our praise. God, be glorified. God, get the glory. God, you be lifted today. Oh, God, we praise you. Yes. Have your perfect have way. Your way God. We get out the way so you can have your way. Have mercy right now. Now, God, bless us with your presence. Send us a of word today. Send your word. Heal our land. Send your word. Heal your people. Send your word. Deliver us from this pandemic in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pray. Come on, praise team. One more time. One more time. Lift your voice.
One more time. Come on. You are the you so much to the wonderful, our wonderful praise team. Thank you so much this morning for your service and again for your commitment to give God glory and to give God praise. To our wonderful musical staff, Minister Sigma McGee, Minister Jamal Bell, thank you all for your commitment and love for ministry to give God your best and your talent, time, and treasure. And again, to our capable, able, magnificent video ministry, thank you so much again for doing what needs to be done so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can go forth. Thanks, Randy, uh, for facilitating today. That's my only begotten son. Amen. Thank you for facilitating and uh, presenting today the gospel message. And God bless to every one of you who are viewing today, wherever you may be, in your home, in your cars, uh, where you out jogging, uh, relaxing. Thank you for joining us today. We at the New Hope Church believe in building strong families for the 21st century and beyond. And certainly doing this year, this past year, while dealing with this pandemic, We've had much time to consider and reconsider our position in God, in the Lord. And we have come out, we are coming out much better than what we were when we went in. And God is still on the throne. <laughs> He's still providing. He's still keeping. He's still making a way for all of us. And we give him praise and we give him glory for all that he has done and all that he is doing. Great is our God and great is his faithfulness toward us. Every day he sends us fresh new mercies. Nothing stale, but every day is fresh from the throne of our God. So we thank him for providing us not only what we need, but he's also providing us the desires of our hearts. So we want to say thank you, God, for all that you have done. Now we want to say to the body of Christ and to our members and covenant partners, again, thank you for hanging in there with us over these recent months, this past year and plus. Listen, we had to learn on the fly how to do things in a, uh, in a way that was pleasing to God. And God guided us and God kept us and allowed us to develop these platforms so that we can stay in communication and in contact. And the most important uh, thing about it is that the word of God kept going forth. Amen. His word was preached and his word was taught. And uh, the people had a chance to praise. So we thank God for that. Real soon, we're going to be uh, giving you some good news in terms of our reopening. Our committees is at work. Uh, we are now uh, developing our plans and procedures and policies. Uh, we've been working on that for several months now, but we're in the finalization stage. 
And real soon, we're going to have announcements uh, concerning the reopening of the New Hope Church. Amen. You want to do it in a safe manner, one that will keep you safe and provide an atmosphere for real worship uh, for those who come in these gates and in these courts. So stay in touch, stay in touch, stay in tune. Announcements are coming soon. Next weekend, next Saturday, uh, we're going to be having our drive-by pickup communion. And on the first Sunday, uh, we're going to have, this is new, we're going to have simultaneous worship in the sanctuary and in the parking lot. So uh, if you want to drive in and stay in your cars, there's going to be speakers out there as we worship in the sanctuary recording. You will have a chance to hear it live on the grounds of New Hope. And while you're there, we can commune together as well. So please make room and uh, make provisions uh, to be here on campus on next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We start right at 9 and we'll be having you out around 1030. So thank you so much for your help and your cooperation. Today's word is coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 5. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 5. I want you to take out your Bibles, take out your pens and your paper, amen, and make some great notes today because there's a word that the Lord is going to release today in our hearing that's going to allow us to become more and more like him. Hopefully, it will motivate you, empower you, and inspire you uh, to run on and see what the end is going to be. I'm going to read from two translations today, the New King James Version and the New Living Translation. The New King James Version and the New Living Translation, the NLT. Gospel of Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. The fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from land, to put out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Jesus sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, here it is, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. In the NLT, the New Living Translation, it reads like this. One day as Jesus was preaching... On the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. To push it out into the water. That's what launching means. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. Verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets. To catch some fish. Go out where it is deeper. And let down your nets. To catch some fish. 
King James says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. This morning, I just want to encourage you to launch out into the deep. Launch out into the deep. Now, this is a story of an event where Jesus had encountered a crowd who was hungry for the word. Jesus had encountered a huge crowd who was hungry to hear the word of God. It would not have been conducive for him to stay on land. He had to put a little distance between him and the crowd. But a safe distance, a distance that was yet close enough for the crowd to hear him declare and to decree the word of God. It is important here that we notice the appetite of the crowd. The appetite of the crowd who was pressing Jesus at this point in his ministry was not pressing to get a miracle or to be healed of some type of disease. The purpose, the primary purpose for the crowd being where they were was to hear Jesus preach and teach the word of God. They purposely positioned themselves in a place and in a posture where they could hear the word of God. Now, brothers and sisters, I know that, you know, we have many opportunities. Uh, we have many venues, many places where we could go or where we want to go to do what we would like to do. But here's an example today that this crowd was hungry. This crowd was thirsty to hear the word of God. I asked myself a question. I said, Lord, now, why were these people so hungry? Why were those, they so passionate about being in a place where they could hear the word of God? They could have went to the synagogue. They could have gone uh, anywhere else, but they wanted to be in a place where Jesus was preaching, where Jesus was teaching. It's not important just to hear. You got to be particular about what you hear. Right. Hallelujah, somebody. Everybody could be talking. Everybody got conversation. Everybody got commentary. But you got to be careful and particular as to what you receive in your ear. The Bible says this. It says faith come by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you have an appetite for the word of God, nothing else will suffice. When you're hungry, you want some food. When you're desperate, you want deliverance. When you're hurting, you want to be healed. When you're thirsty, you want to be quenched. And when you want to hear from God, you got to get in a place and put yourself in a position where you can hear the unadulterated word of God. Why is this word so important? The word is so important because the word is a lamp unto your feet. And the word is a light unto your pathway. The word, listen, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts going in as well as coming out. David said it this way. He says, we ought to meditate on his word both day and night. He also said that your word is so important to me, God, that I have hid your word in my heart 
so that I will not sin against you. Joshua said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it both day and night. Hearing the word of God will shift your life. Hearing the word of God will shift your life and everything in you will be shifted to line up with God. They had an ear that wanted to hear, not know anything but the word of God. So they pressed Jesus. They came in droves. They came in droves. They came in droves. We want to hear from you, master, teacher, rabbi. We want you to tell us again the things of the kingdom. Preach to us again about the kingdom of God. Talk to us again about the possibilities in the word of God. They were hungry. And they were thirsting. They were hungry. And they were thirsting. The Bible says if we be hungry and thirsty, we shall eat and our thirst shall be quenched. The ears were perked up to hear the word of God. Opportunity was at the intersection of them hearing from God. Opportunity was meeting the moment. And this was one moment they did not want to miss. This was one appointment that they had to keep. So they pressed Jesus. They came to the, to the place where he was at the seashore, at the Lake Gennesaret or the Sea of Galilee. Now Jesus had a word. Jesus had a word. He looked for an opportunity to preach the word. So he saw empty boats. Write that down. Empty boats. Boats that were available but were empty and were not being used. They were usable but they were not being used. They were available for use but nobody had uh, an invitation or a reservation. So Jesus saw opportunity meeting the moment. Look what happened. The Bible says in verse number two, he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and they were washing their nets. They had used them and now they had vacated the boats. They were washing their nets. They had been out on the, lake, on the lake all night. They had done what they had to do and they didn't catch anything. So they were washing their nets. They were packing it in. They were getting ready to go home. They were getting ready to turn in. The NET says, the, the NLT says, he noticed two empty boats, empty, at the water's edge. But the fishermen had gone out of them, had left them, and were washing their nets. So what did Jesus do? Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, the owner. He said, launch out, push out. Push out into the water a little from land. Launch out a little from land and uh, let me utilize this boat. Jesus turned a boat into a pulpit. He sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. He sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. The word of God was released into the ears of the hearers. And they were right there taking in every word that was being spoken by Jesus. Now, we don't have details of the text or the manuscript that Jesus taught on that day. We don't know. But we do know this, that whenever he opens his mouth and whenever he releases a word, that word has an assignment. That word has an assignment. And the assignment is... He says, whatever he released, it will not return void. It was purpose behind those words. 
there was an assignment behind those words. And those who heard the word benefited from the presence and from the power of the words spoken by Jesus. Nobody left. Nobody looked at their watches, their time clocks. Nobody got impatient. They all sat there and took in every word. Question right now is, how hungry are you for the word? How hungry are you for the word? How much time are you willing to spend in the presence of Jesus to hear what Jesus has to say? He was speaking and the people was receiving. Jesus spoke, they heard, and they received his word. Every word he spoke, everything he said was received in the ears of those who heard. He preached. He taught. And verse 4 says, when he had finished speaking, when he had stopped, according to King James, when he had stopped speaking, he turned around and said something to Simon. Point number two. Simon was the owner of the boat. His plans was to go home and get some rest. But he was patient with Jesus. And since he allowed Jesus to use his boat, he just hung around. He really didn't come to hear the word. Watch this. Simon really didn't come to hear the word. Simon came to protect his property. The people on the seashore, they came to hear the word. They had purpose for coming. Simon was there, the owner of the boat. The only reason he was on the boat and stayed the whole time is because he was protecting his property. He really didn't have an interest in the word. But listen, sometimes when you hang around the right place, Amen. and when you hear the right thing, yep. it can change your life. That's why I tell people all the time, look, folk may not want to come to church, but you bring them anyhow. Folk may not want to hear the word, but you preach it anyhow. Right. Folk may not want to uh, reverence the word or respect the word, but you represent the word anyhow. And something about when the word goes forth, it hit, hits everybody's ear. Everybody hear it. And even if you don't appreciate it, something will happen on the inside of you. That will cause you to line up and get right with God. Everybody who have come to Christ, you didn't come to Christ because you wanted to. Some of us came because we were just in the right place at the right time. You know, we just was here trying to do something else. But because we were here, we heard a word that changed our life. Simon Peter heard every word that was taught and preached by Jesus. He was awestruck. By the word. He heard the word. And something on the inside of him. Began to line up with the word. You see you don't know what you got on the inside of you. Until it matched with the word of God. You really don't know how much faith you got. Until it hear the word of God. The word of God will ignite something in your spirit. It will light your pilot light. It will cause you to start looking at things a little bit differently than what you used to. Simon was there. He heard the word. And when Jesus had stopped speaking, when he had finished speaking, watch this. He said to Simon, now go out where it is deep and let down your Nets for a catch. He said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, he didn't say this to anybody else. Not to James and John or the other guys on the seashore. He turns to Peter, Simon 
Peter. He looks him in the eye and he says to him, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Put a pin right there. Simon responds to him in verse 5. He says, he says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Master, rabbi, teacher, I recognize your ability. <laughs> I recognize who you are. You, you're very eloquent. You, your words make sense. You got a good word, inspiring, empowering. I, I see the eyes of those who, who are listening. I feel the uh, atmosphere changing. But let me tell you something, teacher. My name is Simon. And I am a fisherman. I'm skilled. I'm trained. And I am experienced. Just like you are as a teacher. What Simon was saying, look, I can't do what you do, but you can't do what I do either. I'm a fisherman. And let me tell you this. Look, this is a, you know, got a little hard. Let me, let me tell you something, Jesus. We have been out here all night <laughs> fishing. And we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, uh-oh, at your word. Nevertheless, at your word. Nevertheless, at your word. But if you say so, <laughs> NLT, but if you say so, I will let down the nets again. I've been washing my nets. I don't prepare my nets. I done mend my nets from the rigor and the rigorous fishing trip all night. I've packed them up. I stored them up. I just, I'm just allowing you to use my boat, but I'm not thinking about fishing now. I'll fish tomorrow night. But, nevertheless, here we go, right here. Nevertheless, at your word. You see, when opportunity meets the moment, when opportunity meets the moment, you have to rely on something greater than yourself. Hallelujah. When opportunity meets the moment, you cannot rely on yourself or on your own strength or even on your own knowledge. You got to rely on somebody greater than you. Simon recognized that Jesus had command over a word. And the words he spoke brought life to the lifeless. The words that he spoke gave hope to the hopeless. The word that he spoke helped raise the level of attention of those who heard it. Something about what Simon heard, he was inspired. And he says to Jesus, I didn't have too much success last night, but Nevertheless, if you say so, nevertheless, at your word. If you're going to do anything different in life, you ought to do it at the command of Jesus. If, if you're going to launch out, if you're going to get into the deep, you ought to go in the deep with Jesus. And Jesus just looked at Simon he didn't fuss with him. He didn't struggle with him. He just said to him, launch out into the deep. Because we can't catch nothing right here. It's too shallow. You see, we want blessings in shallow waters. It ain't going to happen. We want help in shallow waters. It's not going to happen. We want to be able to see and stand and feel and touch. It's not going to happen. You see, as long as you're in shallow waters, you don't have to exercise no faith. 
As long as you're in a place where you're in control, you don't have to depend on God. But when you launch out into the deep, when it's only you and Jesus, hallelujah, you either swim or you sink, swim or you drown, make it or you don't. You got to make sure that you're out in the deep, number one, but you're in the deep with Jesus. And you're standing on his word. Nevertheless, that's what Simon says. Nevertheless, at your word, at your command, if you say so, I'm going to do just what you say. Now, if we do just what he say, we will get just what he want to give. If we do just what he says, we will get what he is willing to give. I know you've been doing this on your own, but I wasn't here with you. I know you've been fishing all night, but I wasn't there with you. But this time, Simon, you got somebody with you who's able to command heaven and earth to show up for you. You got somebody with you who can make a way out of no way. You got somebody with you who can make things turn around for your good. Peter, Simon, launched out. He launched out into the deep. I think they went so far from land that they couldn't see land no more. They went so far out there in the lake of Genesaret, the the Sea of Galilee, until they could not see the seashore no more. They went where the fish was waiting, but they couldn't catch. Maybe he went right back to the same spot that he thought he should have caught some fish, but didn't catch anything all that night. Jesus said, go back out to the deep. Go back out, launch out. Move out, launch out into the deep. And when he got there, he simply said, we're not going to fish, but just let down your net. The same net that you had already prepared, already mended, already fixed up, ready to hang it up. Put that net down into the deep. And the Bible says when he let down his net, my God, look, look, look here's right here. He says, when he let down his net. Net, verse number six, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their nets were so heavy because of the fish that they had caught, the nets were beginning to break. Their nets were breaking. In the NLT, at this time, their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. They were so full of fish that they began to tear. And then, verse 7, a shout out for help brought their partners in the other boats. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Now, why were they so successful now and they were not successful the night before? The difference is they had Jesus on board. Why were they so successful now and they wasn't successful then? Why did it work now and it didn't work last night? It's because now you are operating on the word of God. When you operate on his word, when you do what he say, you will get what he's ready to give. When you obey God, you will have much success. The Bible said they had so much fish, so much fish in their nets, their nets began to break. Peter was so inspired, he shouted out, his voice was heard on the megaphone. He said, boys, don't go home, get back in your boats, hurry up and come on back out here. It's biting. The fish are plenteous. And when they got back out there, my God, even when they dropped their nets, 
fish that start jumping in. Now listen, I believe the fish was on an assignment. <laughs> They weren't responding to Simon or to James and John or the other boys, but the fish was responding to the word of Jesus. When Jesus speak, things happen. So many fish, see, they didn't catch fish. The fish caught them. The fish started jumping in the net, started jumping in the net, started jumping in it. So many started jumping until it got full. Start breaking. Hey, come on out here. I got more than what I can handle. How about that? I got more than what I can handle. Come on over here where I am, where we are. Things are happening over here because Jesus is here. Come on over here. We got, we got something that works over here. <laughs> we got something that works over here. We got something that will turn your life around over here. Listen, the fish, the fish represented bounty the fish represented finances they had so much fish until they can go back now and sell it in the market and get a return they had so much fish they can take it to the community and feed everybody hey come on over here something good is happening Jesus is causing fish to get in our nets Hallelujah. It only happens when you get in the deep water. Get out of your comfort zone. Come out of the shallowness of your life, the shallowness of your thinking, the shallow waters of your living, and come on over here in the deep with Jesus and watch things turn around. I'll close with this. And they came. And they filled both boats so that they would begin to sink. When Simon saw it, watch this. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees. Sometimes it takes a miracle to turn your life around. Sometimes it takes a miracle in order for you to turn around. He heard the word that was preached. On the seashore, he heard the lesson that was taught on the seashore. He had some respect, but he wanted to match his wisdom and his energy and his skills with Jesus. You're a good teacher, Rabbi, but I'm an expert fisherman. And Jesus simply said, launch out into the deep and get ready for a catch that you never caught before. And when Simon saw what had happened, because of the presence of Jesus in his life, he fell down at his knees and worshiped. When you recognize, saints, and when you realize how good God has been to you, you ought to fall down on your knees and give God worship and give God praise. Because can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody bless you like Jesus. He said to the Lord while on his knees, he said, Lord, depart from me for I am a sinful man. He said, Lord, please forgive me. I just didn't really know who you are. I've heard about you. I've seen the crowds, but... I really didn't believe, but now that I've seen and what I've heard, what I've heard and now what I see, what I see based upon what I've heard, I know now that you're the real deal. You're the real deal. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. He fell down on his knees and he repented. He said, I'm a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. 
They were astonished. They were amazed based upon the blessings that they had received because of adhering to the word of God, being obedient to the word of God. And Jesus said to Simon, he said, Simon, do not be afraid because of what you caught in fish. Because now on, from now on, you're going to catch men. Don't be afraid from now on, you're being fishers of people. And as soon as they landed, watch what happened. They left everything and followed Jesus. Now that was their livelihood. That was their business. But they saw somebody greater than that business. Somebody greater than their past. Somebody greater than their problems. They saw possibility. And they saw opportunity. And when opportunity met the moment, they said to Jesus, we are forsaking everything just to follow you. Launch out into the deep. Get up from your shallowness. Come out of your comfort zones. Come over here. Hey, come over here. We're catching fish. Jesus is right here. Come where we are and be a part of what God is doing. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother and oh my sister. What a good time to change your life and to launch out on the word in the deepness of Jesus. Come on, Lonzo. We offer Christ to you. This is what he wants to do. All you got to do is come. Launch out into the deep. You got to move out of your comfort zone. You got to move out of shallow waters. Got to move up from around shallow people and start launching out Amen. into the deep with Jesus. He won't let you drown, but he will bless you if you stand on his word. He will keep you if you depend on his word. He'll make a way for you if you stand on his word. I know you've tried it on yourself, on your own. I know you tried to fix it. I know you tried to make it work, but it didn't happen. But come on over here where we are. Jesus said, launch out. Let down your nets. Get ready for a big catch. He has blessings waiting on you. His word has an assignment in heaven and in earth just to turn things around for you 
You will never ever be the same once you spend a little time with Jesus. If you're hungry, eat his word. If you got an appetite, position yourself to hear what God has to say. Trust me, he will make a way out of no way just for you. Prophetess? Just want to say, Bishop, what a beautiful word today to lunch out into the deep. And we all need to lunch out in the deep. And I like what you said. You say, hearing the word of God will shift your life. And I know that is. All of us should know that is true. When we get in the word of God, it will shift us. Amen. And, but I want to say to you, how hungry are you for the word? How hungry are you for the word? Because the fact is, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. And I, I like that Simon and Pete, they fished all night long, all night. But they didn't, not one thing that they catch because they didn't go deep enough. And that's sometimes in our lives, we don't go deep enough. And you got to lunch out in the deep. Sometimes we too shallow. Some of us, we're lukewarm. You, 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 you got to get in the deep. You got to get hot. Because he said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And how do you get in the deep? By being faithful, by being loyal, by being obedient, by being diligent, by being steadfast in the deep. By, by forsaking not the assemblies of your brethren, that's how you get in the, in the deep. And when you, when you lukewarm, you, 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 you're doing the things of the world. You, you, you can't get in the deep. And Jesus said, you got to come out of that, and you got to go into the deep. Because deep, we get deep. And some of us, we need to get in the deep. We, we're asking God for some things, and you're seeing the same thing. They're doing the same thing. But we got to get into the deep for our children, for our families, for our marriages. For our healing, we got to get in the deep and trust God. And I just thank God for that word today because that, that's a transformation. I can remember when I was lukewarm. But he said, when you lukewarm, I'll spew you out. I didn't want to be spewed out. So I had to get all the way in. And the more, every time when the doors are open, I want to be in the presence of God. I like being in the presence. And I, 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 and I have to say this. We've been on Breakthrough Prayer and um, it's for those that want to eat, because everybody don't want to pray. And I, I realize that now. But I thank God for those that are faithful, those who are going in the deep and being faithful and loyal um, to God. Because right now, the, 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 our biological, the church is closed. But the access, it took through Monday, Wednesday, and Friday into Tuesday, Bible night study, and Sunday morning right now where we can get in the deep, in the presence of God. But, Bishop, I just want to thank you for that right now word. It was on time, and there's this blessing for the kingdom. And I just thank God for that word because it was just, it was definitely medicine and food to my soul. Amen. 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 Thank you, prophetess. Listen, we are navigating through some uncharted waters. And we're dealing with stuff now that we haven't had to deal with in the past, we're dealing with all kinds of opportunities, mental challenges, financial challenges, health challenges, stuff that we didn't have to deal with in the past. And even in the midst, we're trying to get back to a place where we used to be, comfort zones. It's not going to happen that quick. So, in the interim, what do we do? We got to launch out into the deep waters with Christ. We got to get back in the place where he have challenged all of us to be. We don't have a choice now. We don't have a choice now. We got to depend on God. We got to trust in him. The Bible says, in all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct, will direct your path. All we got to do is take him at his word. Trust him at his word. His word will never return void. His word will never, ever fail. His promises are sure. Every promise in God is yea and amen. So, 
inconvenience yourself and launch out into the deep with Christ. And watch God work it out for you and your family. Trust me, he is still in the working out business. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. All right, it's time to give. It's time to sow. It's time to partake and participate in the plan process promulgated by God. Let me say thank you to all of our members, partners, and friends who helped us, who sold into the re-roofing of our church. Thank you so very much. The work is now completed, and we are now ready for the rainy seasons. Thanks to you, we were able to complete this project, and we want to thank you for being so generous with your seed. Now, let's be faithful with our tithes and our offerings. And right now, you can go to our cash app, NHMBC1881. That's the new hope. NHMBC1881. And you can sow your seeds right there. Or you can give by Typhly online or by text giving. All the information is right there on the screen for you. And you can go to our website, newhopembc.com, newhopembc.com. Press the give or the donate button and sow your seed there. Or you can give the old-fashioned way, write the check, put it in an envelope, mail it, or bring it by. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, from 9 to 5, just to serve and service you. Thank you for participating Thank you for partaking in this process promulgated by God to be a blessing just to you. If we sow the seed, God will send the harvest. If we plant, God will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we do not hear, have room enough to receive. So thank you in advance for all of your uh, faithfulness, your contributions, and your commitment to the kingdom of God. We love you, and may heaven smile on you. Let's continue to pray much for our valiant member, Jackie Butler. On yesterday, she laid to rest her husband and our member, Robert Butler Jr. Uh, we're praying for the Butler family, that God will continue to hold you in the hollow of his hand. And all of the other families of our church and our fellowship who have experienced loss of loved ones, we're praying for you constantly that the Lord will continue to strengthen and restore you back to good health and right minds as you continue to serve God, you know, in spirit and in truth. Praying for our sick and shed in, that the Lord will heal you and restore you and keep you and return you back to your active duties to your home and community. Amen. Prophets? I ask you, how hungry are you for the word? Very hungry. How hungry are you for Charlene's cooking? Now you know I'm hungry for that. You know what I got for you? What you got? I got some oxtails. I got some, um, I got some barbecue ribs. I got some ham. I got some barbecue chicken. I got some baked chicken. I got some collard greens. I got some lima beans. I got some macaroni and cheese. I got six potato pies. And I got some pound cake. And I got some cornbread. And it's all, it's a family affair. All right? And I haven't did this, but we are able to come together. So y'all get ready. I put a whole lot let me of give, Let me give the benediction so we can go home right now. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Girl, you, been, you done cooked up a storm. I know. I saw it. So we ready. Listen, saints, we love you so much, and may heaven smile on you. Next Saturday now, we're going to be handing out communion packets in the parking lots. Our leaders will be here. And on next Sunday morning, we're going to make it happen. While we're having our live broadcast, there's going to be also opportunity to come and park in the parking lot and have a praise and worship as we worship here. You can hear it right in the parking lot and receive the communion as well. God bless you. Heaven smile on you, and we'll see you 
tomorrow morning for Breakthrough Prayer and on Tuesday for our Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. God has spoken. Let the church say, Amen. Everybody say One day the sanctuary is going to be filled. God has spoken. Saints going to be praising. Let the church We're going to all shout together and bless his name together. Oh, can I get a witness? Let the church oh, say To what his word says. Let the church to what his will Amen. is. God has spoken. God has spoken. So let the church. Let the church. Let the church say. say oh, yeah. Make this your response. Amen. Whatever he says. From the healing of your body Amen. to the raising of the dead, Amen. no matter how you feel, Amen. how your world is feeling, Amen. battle on through the night, Amen. cause we go with the fight. Because your help is on the way. Why? God has spoken. Well, well, well. Let the church, Let the church say. Say Want to congratulate our praise team on these beautiful t-shirts. Amen. I praise. I love to praise and worship. I want one of those. Amen. So we thank God for you. And we are praying for you, your health, your welfare, and your well-being. And listen, stay safe, keep safe until this season has surely passed. God bless you and heaven smile on you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, one day present us faultless before his presence. To him, the all-knowing, the all-wise God, be love, dominion, and power now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. God bless you. God has spoken. Well, well, well. Let the church. Let the whole church. Say all the deacons. All the deaconesses. And all the members. God has spoken. Well, well, well. Let the church. Let the whole church. Say Let the whole church. Let the whole church. The whole church. God has spoken. Let the church say Amen. 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 All right. God bless you all. We love you. Until next time. Amen. Now.